Okay, we have one more speaker tonight, this afternoon. Senator Jim Toms, he's Senator of District 49, which is west of here, Evansville, Posey County. He is a newly elected board member to the NRA. He's, he's a Second Amendment champion. He's also the director of the Second Amendment Patriots, and they meet once a month on the last Saturday of the month. So, uh, please welcome Jim Toms. Yeah. Good afternoon. Proud um, to be here. Wasn't that wonderful music and singing? Yeah. So nice. Yeah. Be careful, they'll hear me. <laughs> okay. There you go. Thank you. That's better. Okay. Yes, sir. Thanks. Well, that was gorgeous singing. I, I, I could have given my time up and let him play some more songs. I like that. And also the national anthem as well. Thanks, uh, Ted and Melissa, for inviting Margie and I out for this event. And I want to thank all of you for being here. And Pastor Roy did a great job. We appreciate that. He is one of those warriors or frontline warriors I speak about. Thank you, Pastor. We need more of that because that's where the war is at right now. But uh, I... Uh, I just a little bit about myself. I am a state senator. What I did for a living was I drove commercial trucks. That's what I did. I was a truck driver. I retired from Yellow Freight, a Teamster truck driver, a union steward for 21 years, truck driver for 33 years, and a Republican. And nobody at the state house could match those credentials. <laughs> Being a union man and Republican, but I I had my reasons, and um, it's worked out well for me. I always felt it'd be nice to have somebody from the working class as a legislator. I um, Nothing against the people that's got money, and there's a lot of them up there, lawyers and doctors and businessmen, and that's great. I'm happy for them and proud of them. But I think it's nice to have somebody that understands the struggles of working people and what it means to get to Friday and still have a few dollars left in your wallet. This is my uh, third term. Next year will be my last year of the third term. It'll be my fourth year. It'll be 12 years. And uh, we talked about whether to do it anymore. I certainly didn't plan to be a career uh, legislator, but Governor. folks won't hear that when we talk about calling it quits. So we mulled it over this year. I said, we got to come up with an answer, Margie. Done a lot of praying over it, on it. And um, I'm going to file again next year only because um, I worry really hard about what's happening. I know a lot of people here, too, probably all of you what we're facing with this new administration. And I, I believe that the only wall of defense between this federal government we have now and the people is the state legislatures. And we gotta have people who can stand up, say what needs to be said, thank you, and not back down, don't follow it up with an I'm sorry. Because if you're waiting for an I'm sorry from me, you're gonna be waiting a long time. I say what I mean, I say what I'm thinking, they say what they want, I say what I want. And uh, so that's been the engagements for these past 11 years. I know it's God and country. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the country a little bit. And then I want to say some words about God as well. But, you know, for the past 18 months, we've been enduring a lot of uh, hateful talk about our country. My America, your America. Saying some mean things about our country. Like this is the worst country you ever lived. And actually, this is, in my, work, in my estimation, the best country on the world. Yeah. Because God has been so good to America. The things we have in this country, the beauty we have, all of the resources. I mean, the mountains, uh, the deserts, the coasts, the oceans, we got it all. A Grand Canyon, nobody else got a Grand Canyon. God gave us Grand Canyon. We're very lucky to be living in a country like this. And the people who badmouth our country, they're doggone lucky they're living here too. I mean, for the past 18 months, we've seen it on TV, the, the, the burning of cities and the hatred toward people uh, that they don't agree with. I mean, it is like uh, malcontents, uh, rabble-rousers, reprobates. I don't know what's wrong with them. If you got a complaint, say it. But they condemn this country and paint it up as a, as a mean, vicious nation. And I think, I look at the people out here. Americans have always been very helpful. They reach out a hand 
Anybody that needs help. They've always done that. God was good enough to bless this nation with some men that could think for themselves and willing to risk life and limb to establish a government like we have. And we've been very blessed of the things that that form of government they established and the war that they went through, the brutal war. It's hard to imagine what it would have been like for eight years of fighting in those kind of weather conditions. I can't imagine what it would be like trying to sleep at night in those hot, sulky, hot summer nights and those freezing cold winters and uh, doing it for no pay or little pay and not sure how it's going to come out because you was up against the biggest army that was on the planet. But God stayed with them, kept his hand on them, and they won. And since then, look at the things that this country has accomplished over all of these years, all these more than 200 years, all the things that this America has accomplished, and all the people around the world that benefited from this country and the people in it. It's a good country and it's got good people. Not all of them. But most of them are good people, hardworking people, family people, people that want to raise their kids right and take care of their families and take care of their nation. We've got people that serve in the military here. That I have a great admiration for those young people that go into the military. i got a son that served in Marines for four years. He's a, he's a major in the Army Reserve now. got a daughter that served eight years in the Army. I served three years, a Vietnam veteran. Thank you. I remember taking an oath when I was uh, over at Fort Knox, getting ready to be inducted. An oath to protect the Constitution, to defend this nation. I was proud of that. I was told we'd fight for freedom when we sent us to Vietnam. Um, we all felt we were doing what we was asked to do, no questions asked, and that's the way our military does. And uh, right now we've got young men and women around the world a long way from home that uh, missing out on birthday parties, and Christmas, Thanksgiving, having their friends. I try to remind people that when they see some of the veterans, the older guys like me now, uh, you might see an old World War II veteran that's maybe crippled and, and he's hunched over. And sometimes maybe young people in particular maybe will look at that as just an old man but he was young once, maybe 16 years old. Lied about his age, getting the military in the war. Willing to leave home, leave mom and dad, leave his girlfriend, his favorite car, whatever it was. And a lot of them didn't come back. And that's the way it has been in wars. But those people that did that, they believed in this country too. They, they was proud to be an American. They, was, they, was, they also recognized that God was very good to give them a nation like this that worth fighting for. So when I see what I've seen in the past 18 months of people speaking about our country like they have, it gets my hackles up. I can tell you, I, I'm tired of it. If you don't like this country, leave it. I don't stay any place I don't like. If it, if it bothers you that bad, pack up and go. If you want to fly out, I'll take your luggage to the plane. But... Uh, I just, I just wonder why has it gotten to this far? How's it got to this point that uh, people have taken these kind of attitudes and uh, and their their hatred for their fellow citizens? I mean, what's brought this on? I think, um, I think a lot of it is just the fact that uh, this nation has uh, chosen to. Wing it on their own. But a lot of the people here decided to uh, get away from God. We took God prayer out of school. We took the Bible out of school. And um, not doing too well by ourselves on this. And you know, when you read the Bible, the Israelites sort of done the same thing. You know, when they was in trouble, they asked God for help, and God, He lifted them up out of that. And uh, when He's riding them high and mighty, they didn't need God anymore. And then they rock bottomed out again. And I, I, I look at that and I think, man, that's a pretty good history book because that was eyewitness accounts that was written down of what took place in. And I'm thinking, well, looking at what they did and what's going on right now, why are we doing the same thing? Is it going, why do we think it's going to turn out any different? 
So I know in America, all the good people that's trying to live their life right and trying to make this nation uh, what it is and what wants to be and what it should be, um, they're doing a great job. But uh, we have gotten people that has taken office, whether it was elected or appointed, then I don't know if they fully understand their duties and responsibilities when they take that office. And they have power to change directions, and they've done that. You know, when you take a position or you're in for office and get elected, regardless of where you thought you were in the social lineup, you're not at the bottom because you're the servant. And you're supposed to behave that way. You're supposed to take care and help people. That's your job. That's that's number one thing you should do. But I'm seeing right now the people, we see them on TV that uh, at every level, especially at the federal level, seem like they've gotten this mentality that they're dictators. They will tell you what you will do. That's not how it works. You know, there was a, there was a Roman uh, historian, his name was Tacitus, Cornelius Tacitus, and he had a quote, I thought it was pretty good, said, the more corrupt the state, the more numerous the laws. <laughs> it keeps coming back to me because I see all what's going on right now. They're rolling these laws out on us, right? Telling us how we got to do, how we got to behave. And uh, I don't think they understand that. And I, I think this kind of reflects on what happened in the past 40 or 50 years where when we took God out of our schools and kids are growing up to be adults, and they don't have that conduct about them, that behavior that they should, if they're going to take a job like this. And uh, I think this is one of the things that we're faced with. I also think about a, a quote that was Charles Finney. He was a minister back in uh, the same time they were drafting the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence and all that. And he had a quote that's kind of neat, too. It said, uh, God will bless or curse a nation based on the course Christian takes in politics. And again, I think about that comment, how uh, the people that are now serving in this government, whether it's local, state, or federal levels, uh, if they were elected by people who didn't have principles and they elect people who don't have principles, we're gonna find ourselves in this boat right now. So it's not the country. The country is still a great country, but some of the people have, have taken some of the glory away from it by the way they behave right now. And I think it's time that as Americans, we're going to have to quit being silent about things. Amen. It's time to quit sitting back and letting this stuff go by and walk away from it because you don't want to get your hands dirty. You've got to get your hands dirty. And when the other side barks, sometimes we're going to have to bite. We're going to have to step up. We're entitled to say our piece. You're entitled to think, say what you think. When these school boards right now decide that they're going to close the doors and keep the parents locked out while they decide what they're going to give their kids to read or see, that's, that's insane. Yeah. That's completely unacceptable. Yeah. I've got a bill right now that I did last this past session because families came to me about some of these books these kids are getting in school from K through 12. Unbelievable. I can't begin to even tell you the language that's written in these books are the illustrations. When I had the bill before the committee this past session, uh, it was about books that the school libraries and libraries are giving these kids. Some of the committee members came down to me before I presented the bill and said, Senator, you're not going to be, you're not going to say these words, are you? You're not going to read these things to us, are you? I said, I can't. Well, this is being streamed live. There's no way I could do this. But I am going to make clear what we're dealing with here. And so I presented that bill. And I did get it out of the committee on a very slim vote, but leadership asked me not to bring it to the floor. I only had a few that were supporting me on this thing. Now, since that time, and I did, I said, okay, I won't, I won't call the bill down, but I will go to the floor on the microphone and tell everybody why I'm bringing this bill. And I will bring it back next year. And since that time, this, uh, this summer, more, more family, more parents has found out about some of this stuff that's going on. And now they're coming to these school boards to express their aggravation and frustration that some of this stuff is being handed to their children. I mean, this stuff is not fit for adults. Yeah. And then these school boards lock them out and won't let them speak. I got a bill concerning that, too, that I'm filing this year, which will require, because school boards are not required to let public comment, they will be required.
to, to give people public comment. You will have a, your right to say what you want about your children. And I'm, I'm just saying, folks, there's, we're going to have to start stepping up the pressure. We're going to have to start pushing back. We're in the corner now. There's nowhere else to go. So uh, I just want to inspire you to, to not only on yourself to uh, step up and uh, be vocal about what you want to say, attend these town hall meetings, attend these places where, these, uh, where there's a, a political entity or subdivision that's having some kind of meeting, present yourself there. You have a right to say it. You need to say it. And get other people to come with you. It doesn't work if it's six, six or seven people. The other side, we've seen this past year, right? We've seen in the past 18 months the streets full of crowds of people working and using, destroying things. We need crowds of people to bring uh, decency back. We need crowds in front of these school boards. We need crowds in front of government buildings. And, and letting them know what we want to say, what we have to think about it. The... Uh, this past week, I spent a week up in Indianapolis because we were finalizing the redistricting process. And um, so we was up there five days, Sunday afternoon till, fr till yesterday afternoon, got out of it. And um, it was a curious thing happened, um, I think it was Tuesday, there was a uh, rally up there, up, it was called a medical freedom rally. Uh, people who don't want to be told what medicine they take. They don't want to be told whether they should wear a mask. If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. If you want to get the vaccination, get it. But I don't need government. You don't need government. You don't need big brother government to tell you what you should do on medicine or how to raise your children or what temperature to set your thermostat on in your house or what food you should eat. This is still America. It still is America. We still have freedom of liberty. What's left of it, we better hold on to it. We better get back what we've lost. But uh, I just found out a little bit before I left here, our, our uh, hotel room to go over to the safe house or right across the street. And um, so I got over there. It was going on 11 o'clock, and that's when it was going to be from 11 to 1 or 30 or something like that, 2 o'clock. But when I got there, I had to go that way to get in the building. There was about maybe, uh, maybe a dozen people setting up microphones and everything like that in, uh, in a tent. So I went on in. Well, I introduced myself to the folks that was there, and I went on, I told them my position on this stuff, and I went on in, and uh, I also told them that I had a bill that will uh, prohibit mandatory vaccinations, uh, vaccine cards, and mask wearing. And I, I went inside, and about one o'clock, I thought, I wonder if they're still out there. So I walked outside, I'm at the top of the steps outside the state house, and the microphone was set up about halfway down in the steps, and there was a crowd, maybe 100 people there. And it was good Americans, not raising cane. They weren't tearing anything up. They were just there to voice their opposition about how they're being treated. They don't want to be mistreated. They're tired of being tortured. And they were given, they had different speakers, and I went down the steps and went outside and uh, mingled with the crowd, said hello to some folks, and the lady asked me if I would mind addressing the audience. And I said, well, I don't know if there's anything I can say that probably hasn't already been said. She said, well, I think, Senator, they'd like to hear from you. So I, I went up there. And I talked to him just briefly, thanked him for being there. I told him about my position, some of the bills I'm working on. And then I wished him well. And then I went back inside because I had meetings to go to and the session was going to pick up. Uh, the next morning I had a whole lot of emails and phone calls. Phone calls coming in my office, emails came in of people who was thanking me for being there and speaking and saying what I did. And they told me that I was the only legislator that came out of that building to say hi to them. One, one center has all come out of that building and say, honey, these are folks that came a long way. They come from all over the state. I mean, they don't, you, you, we're, if, because we've been silent for so long, I don't think they pay attention to us. I don't think they think what we have to say is worth hearing. And I'm telling you, like, right now, right now, this, this audience here, there's things on your mind you want somebody who's in a position of making decisions to hear it, don't you? Don't you? Yes. Don't run right. Yes. So I, I want to at least emphasize that. I want you to know that there are, I'm not the only one, there's legislators up there that are in line with what you're, what's on your mind. We have friendlies up there. But we got a 
bolster our numbers. We've got to have more people come together. We've got to have, and we can do that. We've been at a few meetings where I've told folks, look, if you can get 10 people to come to your house for coffee and donuts, and you organize a little bit, and next time you have your next meeting, each of you being three or four people, you got that many friends or family members, and I've, I've told you, and start building those numbers. And don't think that you can have one rally or one demonstration and walk away and say you've done your job. Not so. You have to be persistent. This is a this is a difficult fight. It's a high water climb, but we can win this thing. We can get this thing back where it needs to be. And it's all in our hands. And speaking of that, when I I think about what we've done here with sort of drifting away from God, I do feel like we're free falling. And the only thing that's going to stop us from crashing is God's hands reaching out and stopping us, catching us. I believe that. And I, I, I say this because um, some of the things that have been accepted in this nation that ought not to have ever happened, the destruction of marriage, that should never be. That should never have happened. Um, we've, had, we've got drug addictions. We've got criminal activity goes on. Um, young people shooting each other up. We have a lot of things that could be fixed if we would just set our brakes and come back to God. Ask God, please help us out. We're in over our heads. We're in trouble. We need help. I think that the, probably the most serious infraction, if you want to call it that, or sin, that we're practicing in this nation right now. I think this is the one thing that's got us divided away from God more than anything else. And that is we kill little babies in this nation. I don't think there's anything else that could exceed that. That's right. That we destroy the most precious gift that God gives to humanity. We kill those little babies. And then we hang signs in our car windows, God bless America. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't. I'm just telling you, I know we pray this and, people, and sometimes in these town hall meetings, I talk about this, and people will come up to me and say, Senator, you, don't you know the se uh, separation of church and state? Don't you understand that? <laughs> my answer is, no, I don't. I know we got it. I look at the cesspool we're swimming in. I know we got it. But I want to tell you this, folks. We had God before we had government, and he's got seniority. That you can take to the bank. Amen. So... Uh, I think if we clean up our act, if we work hard, and, and in that one thing right there would be a major improvement. I think if we could do that, I think we'd see the sun come out again. I think we'd see sunshine on our country again. There's a lot of things we can do. That's one of them, and we need to support legislators who's willing to step up and do legislation on that. Um, I don't know how much longer I got, but I just, I just wanted to tell you that... Um, as, as serious as it is, and sometimes almost as um, so overbearing that there's no hope, don't let it get you down, because we do have God on our side. He does hear our prayers, and we have good people in office that will hear what you have to say, your words. We have that. We've got to take advantage of it. We've got to build on it. It's there for us. We can, we can be victorious in this fight. We can destroy the enemies that's holding us back. But it's in our hands. And it's up to us whether we're going to step up and stand up and march out or stay on the couch and hope somebody else does it for us. Isn't that right? Amen. So that's my words. I'm not giving up. I'm in it for the long haul. So thank you all for letting me say something here tonight. and um, God bless every one of you.